What's up, guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to do the last issue of Mark Spector, The Moon Knight. Uh, well, it's not the last. Yeah, well, it's the last issue. It's uh, issue number 38, but it's the last issue of the Blood Brothers saga, including The Punisher, right? So without further ado, let's see if it's actually good. Ah, something to say about that. Stay tuned. So... Uh, remember then uh, in my previous issue that Mark Spector's skin was cracked by the adamantium pole staff from Moon Knight and then he just was disappearing and the other ones round up the Knights of the Moon with Neptus, you know, the, the woman that brainwashed Randall. Well, it seems as Randall has now reduced himself to some kind of a serial killer because he's now kidnapping women and he had a mask on it. I don't know. Don't know why. And basically, he says, Daddy's home and um, he wants to kill her. And we see all these corpses here. And, and I mean, see, yeah, she is, she's going to be dead in seconds. And we see after the Daily Bugle of Nurses Slain. The art looks really cool. I, I love. Um, uh, Ron Garney's uh, art, written by Terry Kevin, 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 yeah, yeah, and Tom Palmer. Um, yeah, the art is really good, uh, but to be honest, I'm just not a big Moon Knight fan, you know. And now I remember why, because I don't know, it's just that the character doesn't really speak to me. Uh, but you know, this is only four issues, and it has the Punisher in it. That's probably the only reason, along with the, the art. Um, that made me want to, wanted to buy this book. Anyway, so Punisher comes in because he's just tracked him down and he has some pyrotechnic bomb that looks like gas grenades, but somehow with the noises going off, it's some pyrokinetic feast. And he, he says, come with me if you want to live. He, he did it. Really? He did a, he did a Terminator line. And uh, so he's shooting at uh, Randall, but he still has invulnerable skin, although cracked. And um, so the nurses say, how did you find me? Well, well, he find her because of the screaming and the, the bodies and, and the blood and etc. So uh, she says, move, move. He's behind us. Amazing. You think my last encounter with him in Moon Nights in the Central Park six weeks ago would have slowed him down with some. But what, we lost him then, and he'll be long gone from by the time I get you to safety. You can't have the pretty nurse, she's mine, but without or without Moon Knight's help. Randall Spectre's going down. Okay, so uh, Punisher made a vow to get rid of this guy. Punisher style. Now we have this shot, this page, I mean, not this shot. I don't know. Is this. Moon Knight, I guess so, and he's talking with people here. I don't know who these are, but, you know, this looks like a crescent moon. Maybe he has some group of people that I don't know in previous books. It's really not really important. Let's skip it. But they are talking about Randall, you know, the brother of Moon Knight. So and then we see all these nurses here that is, you know, being scared to go home alone because of all the, the killings and all that stuff. And then Randall's coming here and she says, hello. What's the what's the word with? Uh, I, I forget that horror scene when that guy, uh, Jack Nixon, comes through the door and says uh, that line. <laughs> anyway, so um, the other taxi driver says, hey, um, do we need to, uh, to help you uh, to, to, to go into the building? Because they also know that, you know, Randall's here. And he says, no, no, no. Uh, super finally hired... Uh, a doorman after the incident out front the others the other day with the other nurses but maybe next week i really think i could to get this like this kind of protection and welcome home <laughs> yes they are dead now i don't know why randall is turning into some kind of a crazed psychopath going after nurses but it seems um mark specter's girlfriend marlene is here and and Frenchie is crippled, and I believe you know they are ramping up the uh, the the how do you say guards here? You know the the, the protection, and uh, because of what's going on, and I believe this is the Punisher he's disguising himself, and um, so yeah, and then Mark here is in his new 
home with a super duper computer with nothing on it. I hate that. And he says, um, Randall slaughtered the first six nurses right after his defeat attempt to assume the mantle of Moon Knight in the park. 28 days later, he killed five more women. 14 days after that, four women. Seven days later, three victims. Three and a half days later. That explains why he started killing during daylight. Two women. Which means Randall's been building up to attack one woman. Sigmund seemed to think he has a specific target in mind. And he's due to strike at her any moment. So he's using his, uh, I don't know, holographic technology to pinpoint his MO and then he realizes that, oh no, it's in the Manhattan Clinic Hospital where Mar Marlene is lying. So, pff, dude, you just, I don't know, I don't need a supercomputer to tell me that his, that was his next target. What I don't know is that he is slaughtering five women, four women, three women, two women. Doesn't make any sense. Why is he turning into some kind of a serial killer after he was the right hand of Conchu or something just a, just a, a book ago? Feels really weird. Anyway, so he is, uh, Moon Knight has a new costume and uh, he wants to show it off, all shiny and stuff. And he is um, doing that um, Bruce Wayne thing when he just rises out of the water in the movies. And uh, yeah. Flies to the hospital. So, but then there's a blackout in the hospital, and there was the cue for uh, Punisher because he somehow noticed that this was the target that you know that Randall's the the, the building that Randall's going to kill Marlene. And I'm not sure why, but um, maybe I didn't read the comic very well. But I'm sure it's not really well explained. Anyway, so yeah, the power is out and. Um, he says, damn it, Randall Spector's gone. Has come and gone already, but left his dirty work behind. So yeah, he's the trash degenerator. So Randall is here upstairs on the rooftop and he thinks, no one expects an attack from above. Wrong. Uh, so he's getting attacked by his brother. And he says, um, Randall's somewhere in this building. All my instincts are screaming for me to go after him. Have to remind myself that my first priority is to the innocent lives at stake. But, uh, you know, since he's not a tech wizard, he um, calls... Jesus Christ. He's calls Micro, you know? So they're having a conversation about fixing this. Uh, and then meanwhile, uh, we have the, uh, the end battle, if you can call it that, between Mark Spector and Randall. And he says, um, the blow to the nerves in your neck nearly paralyzed you last time. Insanity opens a whole new world of internal chemicals, bro. Amazing what adrenaline overproduction can do. Sure, thanks to the drugs Neptis fed you, just listen to yourself. Or better yet, listen to this. I already broke your skin when you failed to wrest the power of the moon night from me, brother. I may be cracked, little man, but I'm still stronger than your crescent darts. And I'm going to teach you the respect you better once and for all. Uh, so yeah, he's dead, right? Oh no, but he has that adamantium pole. And then look at this crazy face of Randall. Your new new toys won't keep me from killing you and taking your place as the avatar of Khonshu. That's not you talking, Randall. That is something unspeakable evil. And he says, um, yeah, too bad, Mark, because I like me a lot. You're confused, Randall. Melding childhood memories with present day reality. Right, Mark, this is nothing more than juvenile sibling rivalry. Gone way out of my control. And he wants to kill him. And then Mark jumps away and then uses his gliding cape powers to, I don't know, enter the, the building of the hospital. And he's now looking for Moline. And then, oh no, uh, all these women are already dead. Not sure if that Randall's all did that a second ago or did he did before. It doesn't matter, right? Oops, ads. So, um, Emergency generators working again, but Randall's nowhere in sight. And then we see the shadow, and it, it looked like a serial killer horror drama uh, movie. Um, Moon Knight escapes, kicks him back, but then, oh no, Frenchie is here, and, and, and he's crippled, you know? Not sure how he, why Frenchie is here <laughs> suddenly, but okay. And then the Punisher comes in too. Nobody moves, Moon Knight. It's my show now. Yeah, it's all convenient. Is this... I forgot, was this in the first book as well? And then we go into the past and 
I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> anyway, so this is a family affair, Punisher. Get real, Avenger. You've started the cracks in his invulnerable skin, Spectre. If one of my Tumblr bullets penetrates his hide, it'll wreak havoc through the psycho's internal organs. And, um... So, and then um, Frenchie's fighting back because he says, I may be crippled, but I'm not a complete, completely useless. But then... Um, he says, actually, moron, says Randall, you're just dead weight. And he throws him outside and, and Moon Knight jumps after him. Punish says, stupid Spectre. And then he punishes says to Randall, you must get, you just get rid of the only thing between you and your maker. So he shoots it. And I, I love this, this particular shot. This kid, I don't know, being run through with bullets while uh, Mark is, you know, rescuing uh, Frenchie, and then Randall at the same time is being flown, thrown out of the building too because of the shots, and he's falling real quick, and he's screaming, and oh no, it's it's over. He's dead. It's over. And he, Mark Specker needs to identify him. And uh, so, what is the actual cause of his death, Doctor? In effect, your brother's body was destroyed from within by the bullets. The final impact simply broke his corpse. So, and then they are saying, oh, well, Marlene is okay, Frenchie is okay, and there's something behind the scenes here that we're not seeing anymore, so that's not really important for this issue. And then uh, Frenchie is now talking with Mark about what's happening, and he's getting a new Professor Xavier's uh, uh, crippled chair, and he says, what happened, Mark? Randall's imposter was reduced to a bloodthirsty serial killer originally. Though Neptis chemical treatments and actually memories implanted into him from my brother, when Neptis subjected the real Randall, real Randall to the exact same drugs, the same descent into madness was inevitable for him. Right? And basically there are talks and more about the Statue of Conchu. And then, oh no, something happens in the, in the Spectre building. And because Dr. Doom is now here and he wants to speak with Mark Spectre. And I don't have the comic, nor do I have the desire to read further with the, you know, into the story. So, what do I think about this whole thing? Um, there are some interesting things in there. The art is really good. The writing is a little bit hit and miss, especially with this issue. Um, I thought they would continue... You know, the, the, uh, the, the fight between Randall and, and Moon Knight is, of course, inevitable. But, you know, Randall is turning himself into some kind of a serial killer now. And then, oh, no, because of the other serial killer that was an imposter of Randall. And, and Neptus is, you know, using the memories of the imposter, injecting that memories into Randall, making him the same serial killer as the imposter. Sorry, that is a little bit going too far and a little bit overboard. You know, I, I know that the writer is trying to make sense of it, but it didn't really do with it for me. You know, and overall, the, um, you know, Punisher being here, I'm not sure it was really necessary, but I like him more in this book than Moon Knight actually himself. So overall, I don't think it's really a good arc. It was fun, you know, but overall the, the, the conclusion is not that satisfying for me. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the video. Let me know what you think about this. See you next time. Bye-bye.